Hey what's up, I'm Yasmin and check out my interview with Amaru on Amaru Don TV. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with a brief introduction in who is Yasmin. Yasmin is me. <laughs> I'm 22. I'm a DJ, a singer and a songwriter. Um, I was born in Manchester. I was raised up in Glasgow. And for the past three years I've been living in London. Um, you're half Iranian and half English. So growing up, how was that for you culturally? Culturally, I mean, my dad is a very westernised, Middle Eastern man. He, he moved over here when he was 19. He got a scholarship at Manchester University, so he went like straight into education and sort of did his degree, master, like, da -da -da, and, you know, he's like, he's an accountant, so that's his trade. And, he, you know, he's, he's never been back, actually, since he's been over here, so he's, he's really, like, the, the way of life over here for him, you know, he's, just, he's such a westernised man. If you spoke to him on the phone, you probably wouldn't know he was from Iran. He loves, like, just, I guess, the sort of... He, a bit like myself, he likes nice things new, he likes going shopping, he likes nice restaurants, like all this kind of stuff. So there wasn't really a heavy cultural thing, like I don't speak Farsi, which is um, a native language. But um, the one thing that we always had was the food. My mum, even though she's English, she learned how to cook Iranian food like really well. And my grandmother comes over from Iran every, um, every year for like three months, so food. Is what, what I got from her. You went to university and you eventually dropped out. Yeah. So, you know, what was your reasons for not going to university? You know, I think there's a lot of pressure sometimes on. Like, I remember when I was at school and when you're like 16, I said, well, in Glasgow anyway, and you have to like pick your subjects, and it's a bit like, I'm 16, I don't know what I want to be like when I'm, when I'm growing up. It's a bit like, it's quite a lot of pressure. I think there's always that sort of. Uh, well, the obvious route is you go to school, then you go to college, university, get a qualification, and get a job. And it's really sort of, you know, and obviously that's what my dad did. He sort of went straight into university, straight here, da 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 And, and obviously that's quite a safe career path, you know. And um, so I went, you know, I, when I was in school, I was really athletic. Like, I played a lot of sports, and I went to study physiotherapy. Um, which I did for a year and I, I enjoyed it, like I passed the year but during this time I was, um, I started my DJing, obviously music was always around but you know up there it was kind of hard to see it being a, like a career you know so I went and studied physiotherapy but as I was doing it I was a bit, I was a bit demotivated and the music was just taking over everything and so I wanted to go and do a degree in recording arts um, but it was at a private institute, it cost a lot of money and my dad was like, you know, you should go and do something generic like business studies and then, you know, go and do a recording arts degree. Um, so I did about six months of business studies and I was like, can't do this anymore. And at the time the DJ was picking up, I had a bit of sort of interest from people down here and I made the leap. So all that t ties in nicely to um, the single on my own. Mm -hmm. Now, I've listened to it, it seems like it's, it's profound, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, was there part of you that was kind of worried about putting that much of yourself out there on your opening single? Um, no, I'm, I'm a really open person. I, I even sometimes think I want to be more open than I should. Like, I really, I would love people to, I'd love to fly on the wall, like, to see what it's really like. Because I do think there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of um, misconceptions about sort of making it in music, and it's like, but, and there's also a lot of really nice parts of it that don't, you know, get shown at Canoles. Oh, the music industry is full of like selfish, nasty people, and it's like, actually, I've met some incredible people through through this journey, and it's, and the amount of just really talented and passionate people as well, um, you know, I've met, and it's like, so I, I like being open. I like, I like people to sort of know what I'm going through and sort of relate to me because I've I've always been quite an isolated person and all my friends are ambitious people like with drives so like everyone's got their own stuff going on like I don't really have anyone that like tags along with me to gigs just like to just tag along like so it's always sort of been my journey it's been quite solitary so I kind of think sometimes being open about it kind of is nice to let people in. So your science and ministry sounds is it, and is it levels? Mm -hmm. Okay um, at what point did you start getting the, the label interest? Um, in January last year, 2010, um, I mean, I've been recording like casually, like, you know, not a lot 
for a month or two. And then in January, um, I had a session with Labyrinth. And I mean, the, the sessions prior to that, I was making songs, and everyone was like, you know, these are really good. But there was something about them I was like, yeah, they're good, like well written songs, sound nice. But I was like, something that's just not there yet. And then I went in with Labyrinth, and it was a long day in the studio. And we started like five different ideas. And, like we didn't like this, and the computer crashed on that, and then this. And then we just started this one track, and as soon as he like played the groove on the bass, and like it just like everything just fell into fell into shape and he started putting the drums down and he brought out the guitar and I wrote the song while he was just playing the chords and then like he was like oh I'll try this note instead and I was like alright and chop that up there and it was just like this really nice experience of creating this track and as soon as we finished it I, I got this feeling that I just never had before I was like this is the one and that song really was what a lot of people sort of caught on to and um you know, obviously at the time, Labyrinth produced um, Pass Out for Tiny Tempo, and so there's a lot of A and R's passing through his studio saying, you know, what are you working on? What are you working on? And you know, he played the song to a few people. And the worked. album will obviously be hopefully coming out this year. Mm -hmm. um, can you reveal currently anyone who is featured on it or who you're looking to feature on it as a producers and um, artists? So far, I mean, Shy FX has done the first single. I've got two tracks with Labyrinth, two tracks with Diplo. Um, I was just in the studio with Jamie XX, we've made a couple of tracks, so I'm sure one of them is going to get on the album. Um, I've been with Future Cop, who did like Lily Allen, did some Dizzy stuff, and um, who else am I looking to get on the album? Um, there's one song that I've got with Da Vinci um, called Spellbind, and it's very like, it reminds me of that sort of when Madonna was doing the whole like, henna vibe, like that very trippy kind of track. It's so not, like, I can't wait for people to hear it because people will be like, Da Vinci did that. Like I love, that's what I like to do as well, bring out a side to people that they don't see often. But um, this particular track, like, this is very kind of trippy and weird. And there's this rapper from, from Belgium, she lived in New York for a while, called Yara Bravo, who, she was performing a night I was DJing at a while ago called Queens of Hip Hop and I saw her perform and she's just incredible and she's got this voice like the tone just cuts through the room and it's just a really interesting tone so um, me and her kept in touch and I called her and I was like you know I have this song you'd be perfect for it and it was like it's kind of weird because obviously like I'm so into hip-hop I know a lot of MCs like it should have you know people probably would have expected me to have a well-known MC on a single but you know, this track's going to be on the album and it's just going to be one of those ones that sort of, I think, provokes a bit of thought from people. It's a more interesting collaboration. Also, female focus. Um, is there extra pressure on you in terms of your image and how you portray yourself to your fans and audience? Yeah, I think there is. Like, I mean, I don't focus on it. It's not like, you know, for me, music comes before everything. So it's like, that's the most important thing to me, but... Yeah, there's, you know, there is there is a pressure, I guess, with image, and especially, you know, you know, I've had some incredible press from incredible magazines, like fashion, like, you know, high fashion magazines that I never thought would even be interested in me, and it's like, when they sort of give you that sort of nod, you sort of feel like, okay, so now every time I've got out of my house, I've got to look, you know, tip-top, got to be like, wearing all the nicest, you know, nicest outfits, and da-da-da-da. Um, but it's more... I don't try. I don't let it become like an overbearing pressure. Like the number one thing is being comfortable in your own skin, you know, and not changing for other people. Like if I want to look nice, because I want to look nice, not because I'm, you know, doing it so so and so thinks I look nice, you know. And um, but there's always going to be that thing. I think with female artists, it's been such, and in mainstream music, it's been such a sort of stigma. But you know, I really, I would really like to be a role model to young girls, and I think it. The number one thing to translate to them is being comfortable with yourself and happy with who you are. So, so the thing that's obviously now you're getting attention from high outlets. Um, there was speculation about you and the sun, which you probably know about. How do you deal with that type of speculation about your personal? Um, I mean, obviously, with that situation, it was like the first time anything like that had ever happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like it. I mean, it's a bit of a weird one because you just think, when did this become 
my life? When did these become my problems? My problems are like getting speculated by in like tabloids, like about your love life. Like it's it's weird. It was like it was definitely a sort of eye opening moment, and it's like you know, and I mean you know we're not dating or anything, and so it was a bit like random. And I, and I kind of I'm very stubborn. Like I just want people to talk about my music. Like I don't put myself out there to get that certain type of attention. Like. I'm not really in a lot of parties like doing this and going here and going that. I'm quite on my music and if I'm out it's because I'm probably teaching. Yeah. But um, you know, it was, it was difficult but then it was also a bit of an eye opener like, well, this could become your life now. So it's like, you know, I'm sure it's not the last time it's going to happen either. So it's just a bit of a case of being comfortable again with who I am, knowing that the people close to me know who I am, you know, know what it is. and. You know, you just kind of got to crack on with that these things are going to happen and, you know, it's just sort of next level. I'm very conscious that people work hard for their money and it's always that question like, why should you spend it on me? Like, and I think that as an artist, I like to give people a piece of me, which is like you said, on my own is a very personal song. And I'm always going to keep it real with people. I think when people hear the album, there's a lot of things on there, like a lot of insecurities, a lot of like, fears within that maybe I don't come like that aren't put across all the time but it's really sort of part of me and in my mind and I think that's why I've definitely put my heart and soul into my music so it's like you know if you like what I'm about like I'm just a music girl a music fan from the core and you know I'm just trying to bring something and push the boundaries a little bit sonically with the beats that I choose to use and the people I choose to work with and it's just a sort of new movement so if you're into that I'd love you to support and